We are aware that our surrounding environment is full of a plethora of microbes, and that throughout their lifespan, people encounter a great number of them. And it's a marvelous phenomenon of nature, that our body's immune system has the capability to identify such huge number of invaders and thus take necessary actions against them. And in this regard, T-cells also play a vital role. And of course, we know that T-cell receptors are mainly antigen recognition molecules that enable T-cells to detect foreign pathogens. Just consider it as T-cell is like a key head and the TCRs are like the key shaft with variable ridges that have the ability to unlock only particular type of lock that is here an antigen. And we know there is always a particular key to unlock a particular lock, right? So, here question arises, how TCRs are capable of recognizing such vast variety of antigens that a person encounters in his life? Well, this ability to TCRs is provided by their genetic rearrangement that we are going to discuss in this section of our video. This genetic rearrangement ultimately produces a vast diversity in the T-cell receptors and thus generates TCRs with different binding capacity for different types of antigens. This genetic rearrangement of TCR genes is quite similar to that of antibodies or immunoglobulins. We have discussed the diversification of immunoglobulins by this genetic rearrangement in a very detailed video under the title, Antibody Diversification and Synthesis. You can check out that video and learn maximum out of it. But here I am gonna explain the details of that genetic rearrangement again, relevant to TCRs. There, in immunoglobulins, we discuss gene rearrangement for both light and heavy chains separately. But here, in TCRs, there is no light or heavy chain. But there are alpha and beta chains that are found in 95% of TCRs. And in 5% of TCRs, there are gamma and delta chains as well. And the genetic rearrangement of alpha or gamma chain is similar to that of light of immunoglobulin. And the genetic rearrangement of beta and delta chain is similar to that of heavy chain of immunoglobulin. So, to understand its details, let's start with some basic concepts first. You must have known the central dogma of life. That consists of simple steps like transcription and translation where transcription is just like converting a difficult language book into an easy readable and understandable form here the difficult language book is our DNA and the easy one that is understandable and readable is the RNA so during transcription our double-stranded DNA gets converted into single-stranded RNA. But here, there is a twist. It first forms the pre-messenger RNA. This immature form of RNA contains both introns, that are the non-coding gene segments, and the exons, that are the coding gene segments of RNA. So, in the next step, this pre-messenger RNA is converted into the messenger RNA via the process called RNA splicing. This spliced messenger RNA now only consists of the coding gene segments that are the exons. As now, introns have been spliced. Now after this splicing, this understandable form of genes, that is messenger RNA, is then translated via the process of translation. From the sequence of genes to the sequence of respective amino acids, thus giving rise to specific proteins. So, this central dogma of life is applicable to all genetic makeup of the body. But why I mentioned it here, because that's what's going to happen with the TCRs as well. Coming back to the genetic rearrangement of TCRs. 
This genetic rearrangement is same as that of immunoglobulins and is also named as V, D, J recombination. I mentioned this, D, in a bracket, because sometimes it's just VJ recombination, and sometimes it's VDJ recombination. Depending upon the gene segments involved in genetic rearrangement. Let's explain this VDJ or VJ recombination in detail here. As the most abundant TCRs are alpha-beta TCRs, so we will discuss genetic rearrangement of alpha-beta chains here. Also, this VDJ recombination of alpha and gamma, and beta and delta are similar. So, to understand it better, we will start with the gene sequence of alpha and beta chain. Starting with alpha chain, first. Here, alpha chain of TCR is comparable to the light chain of immunoglobulin. So, for alpha chain, at chromosome number 14, there are two set of gene segments, namely V alpha and J alpha. And we know V stand for variable. As these gene segments are responsible for the variable domain of TCRs. And J stands for joining. As these are the joining gene segments between variable and constant regions. Here, we will not discuss the constant region, because it is not as complicated as immunoglobulins. There this region was responsible for determining the class of antibodies, but here for TCR's constant region is same, and it do not require any specific gene rearrangement. So, I am presenting it here, as a single constant region, C alpha. These gene segments for alpha chain are found on chromosome number 14. And there are approximately 70 to 80 variable gene segments. Here, I am presenting them as V alpha 1, V alpha 2, till V alpha 80. With respective L segments, that are the leading gene segments. And there are almost 50 J gene segments. We can show all segments here, so, I am just mentioning few. And from here, you can get an idea, that this rearrangement in alpha chain, is just like gene rearrangement in light chain of immunoglobulin. Also, this rearrangement is VJ recombination. As, D region is absent here. If you recall our previous video on, T cell development, you'll remember that. T cell site of maturation is thymus, where the immature T cells move from bone marrow to thymus for their maturation, and then inside thymus, epithelial thymic cells release some thymic hormones. Under the influence of those hormones, T cells releases many recombinases, mainly IG1 and IG2. And we said previously that these recombinases play role in TCR gene rearrangement. So, now these recombinases are responsible for this, VJ recombination, or we can say V and J regions joining. This joining is completely coincidental. And what happened is that, these recombinases joins any one of the V gene segment with any of the J gene segment. And the part that is found in between those segments, is then excised. For example, just consider a V gene segment, such as V, alpha, 2. And a J segment, for example J alpha 3, are recombined. Then the region between the two, like from V, alpha, 3 to J alpha 2, will make a loop, and this loop is then cut out, by the help of many enzymes. And thus this recombination of V and J gene segment will make a V region exon comprising of V alpha 2 and J alpha 3. After this gene rearrangement, then the transcription of this V region takes place. Along with the C alpha exon of constant region. And ultimately it yields a primary RNA transcript. 
but in this primary RNA, introns along with exons are also present. So, now as we discussed earlier, through the process of RNA splicing, these introns are cut out, with only exons left behind, yielding a messenger RNA. This messenger RNA, then undergoes process of translation, and produces TCR alpha chain protein, with both variable and constant amino acid sequences. Now, after learning about gene rearrangement in alpha chain, let's move to the beta chain. For the beta chain, gene rearrangement resembles to that of heavy chains of immunoglobulins. And this rearrangement is named as VDJ recombination. And why is named so? To get that, let's look at its gene sequence first. The genetic assembly of beta chain lies on chromosome number 7 and is comprised of 2 C beta gene segments for constant region, but both appear to be functionally identical, so there is no variation in constant region. But in variable region, there are approximately 80 V gene segments and almost 6 J beta 1 gene segments and 6 J beta 2 gene segments with only 2 D segments that are D beta 1 and D beta 2. Here, D stands for diversity and these gene segments are found between V and J segments. And so in VDJ recombination, first a D and a J gene segments are combined, followed by combination of this DJ unit to a V gene segment. Thus this rearrangement is named VDJ recombination. For instance, here. First a random D segment, for example D beta 1, combines with the J beta 2, making a DJ unit. This DJ unit then combines with the V beta 2, making a VDJ unit. Now this creates a complete V region exon. Now here again the transcription starts, making a primary RNA with both exons and introns. These introns are then spliced by the process of RNA splicing, leaving behind only coding gene segments that are the exons thus producing messenger RNA. And just like in alpha chain, this messenger RNA then undergoes translation and are thus translated into functional beta chain of the T-cell receptors. The alpha and beta chains are translated in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and like other membrane-bound glyco proteins, they are processed through the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi compartments before expression at the cell surface membrane. So, once these T-cell receptors are expressed over the surface of T-cells, they become enabled to detect the MHC-bound antigen. As we know majority TCRs are MHC-restricted. Certain other antigen receptors also help in activation of T-cell receptors. What are they? and how they help activate TCRs. That's all what we will learn in our next video. So, stay tuned. And for now, this was all about the T-cell receptors. For more such interesting videos on immunology, keep visiting scardia.com. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download Scotia.com app now.